we are Toucher and Rich, and wouldn't you know that the uh, NHL season is right around the corner, and uh, there is some excitement, some uh, unexpected assi- assi- uh, excitement as far as I know. I did not know this was happening. I mean, this is only a, a week or so old in my in my experience. But Ty Anderson is here. He writes all about sports, but he, uh, with the main focus on hockey. For 98.5 to sportsub.com. He's kind enough to join us. Hi. Hey. All right. So uh, let's start with the uh, the headline here. This uh, Patrick kid. Stuck the landing. Beautiful. Thank you. Uh, 19 years old, 175 pounds, second round pick. Uh, Montgomery said he's playing in the NHL. We now know the rules. Nine games in the NHL. If you're a North American player, you can't go back down to juniors after nine games and you can't play in the AHL. So they basically, he's got a nine game audition. This is the deal. Uh, What have you seen? I'll ask you your opinion of him first. What do you see in him? Yeah, I think he's been really good. You know, if you, if you're talking about earning a job and the Bruins entered camp saying they're going to be kids who can earn jobs here. I mean, he's done it. He's totally done it. Uh, He's been their best player. He's been their best center. I think the most impressive thing is that he's winning faceoffs. Like he is winning faceoffs left and right he's gotten better at that he competes he gets to like really good areas of the ice to put himself in scoring positions you know he when they drafted him and we were talking to him we asked him like who do you want to be and he said anthony sorelli and Braden point are like two of his favorite players and he tries to model his game after them point scored 50 last year didn't he yeah but if you look at Braden point he's like a smaller center who just gets to the front of the net and he just gets to these areas where you're like how do they get through everybody and get there, right? And so that's kind of what I see with Matt Potra. I don't think he's going to be like Braden Point, but you can see how he models his game after those guys. He plays a grimier game than I think many will think. Just looking at him, he's 5'11", 175 pounds, whatever it is. Like, like he's a smaller dude, but he finds a way to get in there, and it's all his motor. It's his compete. And I think that he's th- totally earned a job. And if he doesn't get one at this point, it'd be really Well, no, silly. he is. And Montgomery said it, right? Montgomery basically yeah. said he's got a job. So to, to, how unexpected is this? I obviously know, know not, and I would challenge many people, your knowledge of, of junior hockey. I mean, that's sad. Unless I, you're getting paid. Can I tell you something? I think most prospect people are like grifters. Well, sure, because who <laughs> no, else knows? No I mean, way. You, you have such an esoteric knowledge. Like, it's like, who else the hell is, who the hell is going to know? You just killed about five people at an I, online business I don't, on Twitter. Yeah, but yeah. I don't care. I don't care because they, they – Well, I mean, no they're very way. powerful, Ty. I mean, you've really taken on the man. No. So, no. Uh, I mean, the, the, there's if no you're way covered, to watch that many players. There's if you, no way. If you're, if you're covering junior hockey, I mean, you obviously are a man of great means and power. But uh, – Nonetheless, is this what was this? It maybe as you go back and look, it was this. How unexpected is this? I, I understand at 19 he wasn't supposed to be on the Bruins, but was this kid like a, a hot shot coming out? What was the deal with him? I, I think that you had hope that he'd be here a year from now, like mm-hmm. next year would be the year he'd kind of push, right? 20 years old makes more like makes more sense. Like, I thought he would kind of stick around for a little while, maybe play four preseason games and get sent back. Like, hey, you're knocking at the door here, but. The rules make it so that it's hard for us to give you a real look like we want to. But, no, he's forced their hand. I think he's about a year ahead of schedule, uh, which, you know what, they need. Like they need, Oh, yeah. They need a yeah. – pro- like, yeah. Matt Potra could be a narrative changer. Yeah, like, in he terms absolutely of like, could. In terms of, like, their draft picks, in terms of their center pipeline. Like, mm-hmm. he could change a lot of things. It's a lot of pressure. But right now, I think he's rising to it. Because the kids that were supposed to – be doing something by now aren't yes Lysel, uh, Lysel especially and, but and Beecher and, the question is now and we discussed this earlier in the show I don't know if you heard it Ryan Ty where are they going to use him I mean they used him on the third line uh, last Ryan I, Ryan, I, I, uh, Ryan, uh, Johnson. Ryan Johnson oh, I was no. like I was like no, 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 yeah, no, you no. do a show together no I know don't I know like it's RJ, like such a so, no 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 yeah. so, oh, RJ, so my how do they use him he was on the third line last night Fred and I discussed and agreed they really can't use him on the fourth line to be wasted well, there. Billy agrees. As and well. Fluto Shinzawa was the first to think that maybe he's a second line guy. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I have him between Marshan and DeBrusque. Ooh. So that's what I would do. I think if you have a high skill player, nice. you don't waste him with, you know, last night, listen, he played with Frederick and Geeky, and like, that's fine. But you're not going to maximize his skill set, in my opinion, if he's playing third line minutes. Like, you know, maybe you don't give him top power play, but. You got to use them with skill guys to get the most out of players. And and when you have a nine game trial run, 
where you can basically do whatever you want, you better use that to maximize the skill set and find out what you have there. You want to do one game or two games where he's with those guys? Sure. But the most you're going to get out of him is by putting him with guys who can score consistently. That's Martian. That's DeBrusque. You know, I was even at the point, but I realized it's not going to happen because they really want to use Zaka as a center. I was at the point where I was during the preseason, I was like, I wouldn't be against seeing Zaka, Patra, Pasternak at some point. But hmm. I understand why they don't want to do that. Zaka is a center now for them long term. It's either second line center or third line. It, it it all depends how you look at, like, what do you view the line that has Pasternak on? The first or the second? First line. line. Right. Like, so I'm the I'm the camp that I look at Martian as the first line. That's about how it's been for 10 years now. So that's just probably me having to, like, retrain my brain there. Uh, but Zaka will be centering Pasternak. So that's top six. Again, whether you look at it as So that will be the second, second line. line. Yeah. Yes, that will be the second, because they're not moving Martian off the first line. So they, so that will be the second line, and then Coyle's the third line. And that's where you get the most out of Coyle. Yes, like that's, he's, he that, can be physical. Yeah, and, and Coyle and Frederick has been a great combo. Yeah. It, like, if big. you look at their numbers last year, you know, when they were together, they were outscoring teams like 2-1. to one. It was like 30 goals for 15 against. When you took Frederick away from Coyle, he was actually negative on the ice. He was like it was like twelve goals for and fifteen or sixteen against. Like Is, there's just a chemistry there with those guys. So I was reading uh they were saying X factors for every team and Frederick was the guy they picked for the Bruins. What you you mentioned him. Is you know, they gave him a deal. Is this the year that he was a, a they invested, you know, assets on him? Is this a, is this a, a, the year that he he breaks? Yeah, I mean, last year I thought was the year that he broke through. You know, he shot oh, okay. yeah, he shot sixteen percent or whatever it was. Like, yeah. like it's probably gonna go down a little bit, but if he can still be a factor in terms of like, you know, he had this weird ability where everybody who played with him last year was better playing with him on their line mm. than without, and so. If he can still be a space-clearing, power-forward type, you know, I know internally they want him to be Tom Wilson. I don't think he'll ever be Tom Wilson. Yeah, he doesn't like that, right? Because he wants to be a scorer, correct? Well, I mean, Tom Wilson had did have a thirty goal year, I think, at one. No, point. No, but Frederick like, lost his way for a while. He yeah, like Frederick was, was and didn't play the way be... he needed to play, and and they benched him for the they, for that. They reason. told him, "Hey, go drop penalties," and he did that, and then he crossed the line at a certain point. I think it was the Ovechkin thing. Like that, remember that incident? It was during the bubble, so it's easy to forget because that was a weird time in the, the world. The, that that twenty twenty one year where there were no fans in the stands for like three months, he did that thing where he got like Ovechkin to like spear him, and then I think from that point on, the Bruins like, all right, we don't want this happening. Or the league said, hey, you got to stop this because we're gonna start penalizing Frederick because we don't want our marquee talents getting goaded into suspensions. And it's like, well, tell Ovechkin to not do that. But I think they hit a point where they said, stop being an agitator. And he was like, well, that's my ticket to the NHL. What do I do? Be a hockey player. And they and he finally found that balance. I think Montgomery has been a perfect coach for him. I think that's that's been the biggest thing that I have found talking with Frederick, talking with people, is that Montgomery has been a much better coach for Trent Frederick than Bruce Cassidy was. And that's fine. But, like, that's been the biggest difference, I think, is just Montgomery has known Frederick for years, even before coming to the Bruins. It, because Monty Montgomery has that – St. Louis connection. I hate that I just called him Monty. Uh, but he has that St. Louis connection, so they've known each other for a long time. Who is his team's starting goaltender, number one goaltender by the first of the year? Is it still Olmark, or yeah. is Swayman f- going to finally supplant him? I think it's Linus Olmark. Uh, there's no reason to think it can't be Linus Olmark. I think that... Ideally, does he get traded at the deadline? No. No, Why? because this is this is your backbone. Like, goaltending is now your backbone. It was centers, now it's goaltending. And so... You don't think Swayman could be a goaltender for a cup contender right I mean, now? I still need to see it. At 24? I still need to see it. He's I don't, better in the preseason, don't you think? I thought that Lena's had a... had. It, you look at the, the box score, you know, it's five goals on 41 shots. I thought he was phenomenal in the Washington game. Agreed. Washington had 20... What credit, about the 20 Flyers high danger game. shots. The Flyers game? Wait, what What was the other? What, what, the, the Capitals. The, oh, good, the, the Capitals, Capitals, he was great. The Capitals, um, he allowed five goals, but I agree with Ty. I watched the, most of that game. He was unbelievably good. He was ridiculous. Capitals should have scored uh-huh. nine or ten in that uh-huh. game. Very good. And so here's the thing with both guys. I don't think that either one has had, like, a great postseason run. Olmark had a great game four down in Florida last year. He had a great game one against Florida last year. He wasn't good against the Hurricanes. And I thought that the Bruins played their best defense they've ever played in front of Swayman in 2022 against Carolina. 
He didn't win a road game. Like that was an issue. Like so, I think they need they need one of those guys to bump to to pop. And I don't think we know which one it's going to be yet. And I also think that if the Bruins are as good as I, I think they're going to be this season, when you get to the playoffs, if it's how you got there, go with the rotation. How good? Don't do you, go away from it. How good do you think this team's going to be? Second place in the Atlantic Division. Really? Yes. Uh, that's what ESPN is saying too. I, By the way, he did he did face Philadelphia and lost. Jack, as is this? Oh, we were, I know, but specifically, we were talking about loss. I know, but I was bringing up another game just to be a hot shot. All right, so Wasn't you got the shootout loss? Uh, four three, whatever happened. Yeah. All right, so uh, do you, but do you have Tampa Bay not making the playoffs? That's what ESPN has. They have Tampa Bay not making the playoffs. I have Tampa Bay in the wild card hunt. Oh. I don't know if they get there, but I look at that team. That team is is. You remember how the Bruins used to have all their eggs in the basket of Bergeron, Marchand, Pasternak? Yeah. Tampa has that right now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Tampa has point. Hagel and Kucherov on one line. It's a phenomenal line. But once you get beyond that, it's Steven Samkos and then, you know, Anthony Strelli, who's good, but, uh, like, there's a lot of question marks there. Like, uh, all right, let me pose, pose it to you this way. Would you rather have Charlie McAvoy, Hampus Lindholm, and Brandon Carlo as your big three, or would you rather have Victor Hedman, Mikhail Sergachev, and Eric Chernak as the as your top three. I'll take option A. Yeah, same with me. That's what I mean. So I think that the Bruins have a slightly better defense now. And they have better goaltending. And also Vasilevsky's out for two months. That's a and, massive And loss. that's a yeah. back, so we don't know. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You you were talking about the defense. We started this conversation talking about Potra. Mason Lowry is supposedly one of their top two prospects and by all accounts has done very, very well during the preseason, but the odds are stacked against him because the Bruins' defense is stacked. Where does he wind up? I think he's in Providence beginning the year, and I say that only because he's not going to bump McAvoy off power play one. He's not going to bump Ambus Lindholm, who had 50-something points last year, off power play two. So he's not going to play in the power play. doesn't make any sense to give him Derek Forbert's role, being a third-pairing guy playing on the PK. Put him in Providence, give him 25 games down there, playing 30 minutes a night, and see what you have. Because I do, I just think that right now, when you watch Mason Lowry, offensively, a delight. He's a treat. I love it. <laughs> Away from the puck, I see a guy who needs to work on some things a little bit. Needs to understand. Needs to get used to the physicality of the pro game. It's a lot faster. It's a lot different. Guys will target you. You know, I thought that in the Washington game, I thought he was good, but I thought there were times where he, he heard footsteps and turned the puck over, or he lost a bat along the wall. That's totally fine. I'd rather him iron out those kinks down in Providence, where it's relatively pressure-free. He's learning on the fly, and he can play minutes and minutes and minutes. I don't think he has a gateway to high-end minutes out of the gate here in Boston. I think that it he kind of needs to force their hand. It reminds me of Pasternak in 2014. You know, Pasternak began the year in the minors, despite the Bruins needing, like, a right shot, right wing. Like, they needed that. But they said, no, we need to see him in Providence first. In Providence, he was a point per game. They brought him up. He never went back down. He went back down one more time for injury recovery, like rehab. He never went back down. I think that's kind of a similar path here. You're going to see him this year. I just think it's going to be in January or late December versus October 11th. All right. There you go. Ty Anderson. He'll be a very busy man uh, coming up here. Are you going to be at quote unquote media day on Monday? I will. I hate that's at the garden, by the way. Yes, yeah, so what a nightmare. We're, we're, we're not fans. We, we, we too will be there. So. Oh, nice. Yes, yeah, we we're going to be there. there, even though it's not supposedly really media day. Well, it's great. I would say I would come and see you guys, but because you're going to be at the garden, they'd be like, hey, hey where are you going? Where are you going? Where are you going? <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, we're friends. going to be right across <laughs> from the where the press conference is. Yeah. Oh, I love right. anytime I walk down like the garden, like that, down a hallway. Covering the team for 14 years now. There's always someone, sir, sir. Like, yeah, I'm like, yeah. I, I know where I'm going. I'm, go I'm fine. I'm, I'm good. Good. There's like, <laughs> there's always that one security guard every year who's like brand new and is treating it like we are. We are. Well, you're a young looking man. Maybe he thinks you're a teenager. Man, and I'm in. old as hell now. I wake up and my But you don't hurts. look that way. You understand what I'm <laughs> yeah, saying. Yeah, I get it. I get it. My uh, face is my laminate, my friend. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I, we have a very blue collar audience. And when they and when the security guards see me, Mr. Toucher, call me Fred, please. Oh, yeah. And they go, I insist on calling you Mr. Toucher. It's a sign of respect. And I say, I appreciate that because it's better that you're doing that. No, I'm just kidding. I'm never, I'm never at the garden back anywhere. Somebody called me. Well, somebody once like DM'd me and they wanted like career advice, which I'm not a person asked for that. Uh, and they were like, Mr. Anderson. And I was like, please Mr. just call me Ty. Anderson. It feels oh, weird. I, I feel like I don't look old enough to like 
So, I can vouch for that. You don't. I know. <laughs> that's why That's why they talk to me. Like, hey, kid, get out of here, kid. People yeah. go, like, is now a good time to get into radio? I go, absolutely. If you're willing to work in radio, then now is the absolute time to get into it. I, everyone just sits at home making podcasts. If you'll actually drive into a studio, now is the time. Mm. Jesus Christ, Liv has got a show. All right. You got an intro here? Uh, I love that. Uh, all right, so very good. Ty Anderson, read him at 98.5thesportsub.com. Get that all going. All right, uh, Ty, thank you so much.